they need a buy after that game. They really do. Yeah. There's like like this might be one of the times where the buy doesn't win. Yeah, <laughs> well, it keeps winning. I tell you, the buyers are uh, doing really well. All right, mate. Uh, a lot of great performances. We're going to bring in our player of the week. And I've got to tell you, I'm shocked that this is the first time we've had this guy on the show. He has been outstanding throughout his career. I'm talking about the fullback from the Utah Warriors, Mike Teo. And we had a chance to sit down with him earlier today. Uh, coming into this week, uh, we, we had the loss to LA and then the loss to New Orleans. Um, uh, so we, we were given Monday off, which was which was massive. We all the all the, boy, all the boys needed needed Monday off, and then we just knew you know coaches gave us Monday off. It was it was a surprise that they gave us off, and I think all the guys got together. We were like, hey, let's uh, let's bring it Tuesday and let's bring it Thursday, and you know let's try and earn that day off once they give it to given it to us. And I feel like I feel like we did earn that day off on Monday and Saturday. We just came out firing. Uh, it was 24-0 at halftime, and we were all we were even more pumped up at halftime. Uh, we just came out and we just wanted to finish the game and you know, respect our opponents by trying to put up 60. That was the game plan. And be before he came, uh, so his time with USA, I was out injured with my ACL, so I never really, I don't even think I've said like two sentences to him before he came here. So it was actually nice to like meet him and uh, see the way he operates. And uh, once we're on the field. It just, uh, it's pretty natural. Uh, I kind I've always watched him, so I kind of know the way he plays. So as fullback and when he's at wing, I kind of, I, I don't know, just, I know what he's going to do and, you know, I can see him pulling it off before it happens. So, oh, always, man. I'll, I'll, I definitely always need to improve. Uh, you know, taking the year off last year, it, it was like, it was a good break from rugby because you know, playing. I started sevens when I was, I was at under twenties when I was eighteen. Sevens when I was nineteen, and it's just been like always a grind, always a grind. Uh, I'm starting to do. I'm, I'm working on a degree right now on online, so that's like, and I got a family coming, like my wife and you know, kid on the way. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call myself a World Cup veteran. I still have goals to make the next World Cup and and do my best there. Uh, definitely. If I, if I stay the same and I play the same I am in the next World Cup, you know, maybe we don't win again. Like, I don't want to go winless at a World Cup. I don't think anyone does. So there's always there's always something to do and work to do. Uh, let's see. I, I, I always focus on nines and tens and if they're right-footed or left-footed. Uh, Ruben De Haas last week, we, man, he's got one of the best box kicks I've seen uh, in a long time. So I knew that that massive box kick was coming. Uh, I felt like we, we took care of that pretty well on the weekend. Um, uh, yeah, and just, I don't know, I, every 10, every nine, I just make sure I know how far they can kick. It's altitude here, so I got to take like an extra three steps back. I don't think people like really realize, but man, that ball, when it, in altitude, that ball yeah. flies. So every every time you kick, whatever you're used to, you have to back up three, three meters at least. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, that's I don't know, around the league. I don't, I don't, I don't, I try not to focus too much on like the player itself. I just want to know how far they can kick, what foot they kick off. If you, I, if you, if you had to push your chips in right now on two teams making the playoff, knowing their schedule, how they're playing, and what's ahead of them, where are you putting your chips? So, um, I think ATL. Yeah, I think I, think, I, think, I, I agree. I, I mean, not just because of this past past performance, but because I think that um, they're a team that has improved both in terms of how they play, but also in terms of they've made some um, acquisitions. I think having Kalsa at 10, huge difference for them. If you remember, um, they had um, Van Schoelkwit there and then for a couple of games, then there's Curran, it just didn't quite fit. So I think having that right with their 10-12 with their connection, I think that's the right 10-12 connection. Um, so I think that, um, you know, to me, rugby ATL is is good. And, you know, they've got, they've got a couple of home games, right? So they'll play NOLA and they play Rugby United New York. So those are going to be the two big games. If they win those two games, then they're in. Um, and then they're, I'm sorry, they're away in both of those games, excuse me. Um, and then and then they get home with Houston and Old Glory. And, and right now you'd say they're going to win both of those games. So I think ATL could have this wrapped up before you even get into July. 
and and of course July is when teams are going to start losing Eagles. So I think ATL it's June is going to be really really important. Yeah, do you want to hear their run in? I can do it for you. Yep. Obviously Nola in Nola, New York in New York. Those two are going to be the big test of where they finish. I think they go Houston at home or Glory at home. And then they go on a road trip for their last two games. So they're away to the Warriors and they're away to New England. So that's their run, which you can circle a couple of those games where you think, yep, probably looking pretty strong to win those. But I agree with you. The next two weeks will kind of dictate. And I think they'll come through those two weeks. Personally. Yeah, I, I, I think I think they will too. I think that the challenge here is that I think, um, you know, Rugby United have a, have a vein of form. Right, they're doing well, and Nola finished with six games away, including trips back to back to yeah LA and to um, and to Seattle. So I wonder if they'll stay so, out on the West Coast, like we've seen teams do. Yeah, like Glory did that. So maybe they'll just but, set up camp in Vegas or something like that. You know, but it's that that's tough, right? And their last home game is against ATL. So if they lose that game against ATL, then. They, they're going to have to make up ground going six games in a row away. And I know that that is going to be a really, really tough ask. All right. So I don't know. It's no Do you think it's New York, Dan? Well, this is New York's run. They're at home to Atlanta, then the Warriors. They go to Atlanta to play Toronto. Then they go to New England to play against New England, which will be a big game. Then they're at home to Houston and Nola to finish the game. So they have a run of four home games and two away games. So they go two at home, two away, two at home. You'd have to think the way they're playing at home, they win four out of their six, they're gonna be in. Let's do this weekend's games, buddy. Uh, Austin at Houston. Who do you like here? Austin. I mean, I think I think Austin. It's not going to be a high-scoring game. Neither of these teams can score many points. Um, you know, we've we've basically said we don't know what's going on with Houston. Like they've got good players, they have good coaches, they've got good like off-field staff, um, but they haven't been playing very well. So obviously, Houston's going to win this by 30 points. But we'll I'll pick Austin, um, and I think this game will be something like like 18-10. It's going to be it's going to be a close game. Yeah, um, uh, Austin just has so much more to play for. I mean, you yeah. never know, and Houston can rally down there. A little Texas rivalry can always inspire the guys to, to, to turn up. But the one thing to watch out of Austin, their injury toll is ridiculous right now. So right. in the first half against Utah, they lost Ned Hodson. They lost Dom Bailey, Dom Aquina. They lost uh, Michael DeWall's out. Like, he didn't go in the game. Will McGee went out. Frank Halai hurt his shoulder, but continued to play because there was no one else. And so they are, they are pretty, I think, I feel like I'm even missing someone. They got one player who should be available this week, um, who came in a couple weeks ago, Lachlan McCaffrey. Lachlan McCaffrey, McCaffrey yeah. should be available good, to them this good week. Good player. So yeah, uh, but even with that being said, I think, yeah, there's more to play for. And, uh, little I mean, I think just, just, just one of the things that we didn't talk about, Dan, Dan is that, um, even Toronto in the East uh, can look and have a shot in making the playoffs. I don't think that's true for Seattle and, and Houston in the West. We've got two two in the bottom that are just too far too far away. But tell you something about the East. Even though Toronto's sick, they've got a pathway to making the uh, um, the, the playoffs, which is crazy. I think mathematically Seattle and Houston are still technically alive, but I it's out I of think their hands. That, yeah, I think, yeah. It's like crazy. I, mean, like I, I think that, yeah. LA is going to have to lose, uh, but, or Austin and Utah will have to lose. We'll have to lose. Yeah, 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 exactly. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy what it yeah. will take. It All right, ATL at Nola. Now this is uh, you and I did this game last year down there, and we were both walked away super impressed with how ATL defended against that Nola side. Nola last home game. It's going to be a big occasion, and then ATL coming off the uh, the emotional roller coaster that was the LA game. The physicality of that game. Let's see how they recover from that. I still like ATL in this game though, just based on the fundamentals. Their defense play really well into the way Nola attacks, and so I will I will go ATL. But I think this one's a super tight game down there, and I could totally see Nola blowing them out. Yeah, I mean, this is like one of these things where, you know, one of the biggest coaching challenges 
that you have is 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 how do you get your team to um, step up again, which is like something that New York were unable to do after they beat LA. And so and so you can look at that and you could be like, you know, ATL could come out and you're right, Noda could blow them out because physically it's just really hard, mentally hard for them to recover. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think if it wasn't for that, I would be like, I think ATL here is probably a better team. Um, both of these teams are actually grinded out teams. Um, you know, Nola, the old Nola, like score lots of points kind of team isn't, you know, isn't around this year. They, they're a team that needs to go through the phases. That's really, really difficult to do against ATL. I think, you know, Nola coming off a bye is going to give them an edge here. ATL has to do some you think rotation. So? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Buys haven't been great. But um, uh, I think that. I, I mean, some of this is sort of like I want to see the team, right? This, this is definitely one of those ways where where you want to see the teams. But I'm 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 with you. I think I think all things being equal, ATL pulls this off. But Nola might have the edge because they'll be better rested, and and ATL will struggle. But I'll I'll go with ATL as well. Yeah, it's hard to hard to push against ATL. All right, Sienda, uh, Sienda. Sien. Come on, Daniel. Cien, San Diego. Cien, uh, San Diego at Toronto. Who do you like in this one? Well, I'm actually back on the road, Dan, and I'm calling this game. He's back, baby. I get the weekend off and you have to work. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, you know, but I'm so excited. Defer. Yes. defer. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to defer, but I'm going to tell you why I'm excited I'm doing this game because we talked about it. For both of these teams, it's a must win. They're going to both yeah. bring everything they can to it. So I'm really, really excited to do the game. Who do you think, cool. Dan, on this one? San Diego. I just think, yeah, uh, it's tough, tough old year. Toronto uh, with that loss in New England was pretty physical too. So I think San Diego looking healthy, looking strong. And I think they'll play well. Fast track down there. It's early kickoff again. The Toronto kicking off at 12 local time, which is uh, nine in the morning for San Diego. So... No favors in terms of the time for kickoff, but it's definitely not the other. When Seattle had to play at seven their time, you know, that 10 a.m. kickoff, thought that was atrocious. Uh, so I, I will say San Diego, just with more to play for in this game, yeah. 